Welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're diving into a patent that wants to completely flip the script on 100 years of aviation design. It's a fundamental rethink of the most iconic part of an airplane, its wings. So let's kick things off with a question. I mean, think about it. For all the amazing progress we've made in jet engines, advanced materials, and flight computers, the basic idea of a wing sticking straight out from the side of the plane has pretty much stayed the same. But what if that design, the one we're all so used to, has a hidden flaw we've just been working around all this time? Okay, so to really get what this new invention is trying to do, we first have to understand the problem it's trying to solve. And it all boils down to this invisible fight that every single conventional airplane wing is waging against the air around it. It's all about this really cool idea called aerodynamic closure. Here's a simple way to think about it. Imagine you're pushing a long, thin needle through water. It just glides, right? Now try pushing a short, wide board. It's a struggle. Well, the same thing happens in the air. The air needs space and time to flow smoothly back together behind whatever's moving through it. The shorter and wider the object, the more chaos and drag it leaves in its wake. And that right there is the big problem with our traditional airplane wings. They're basically short, wide boards. They are constantly fighting against that principle of aerodynamic closure, which creates a ton of wind resistance and wastes a whole lot of energy. This new concept, though, it tries to work with that principle, not against it. So how in the world do you solve a problem that's been baked into aviation for over a century? Well, this invention doesn't just try to tweak the design, nope. It basically throws the old playbook out the window and starts from scratch with a really wild idea. And here it is. The big idea is actually pretty simple, but it changes everything. You take the wings and you just turn them 90 degrees. That's it. Instead of sticking out to the sides, they run parallel along the length of the plane's body, the fuselage. Instantly, your wings go from being short and wide to long and thin, which puts them in perfect harmony with that principle of aerodynamic closure we were just talking about. But this isn't just about trying a weird new shape for fun. The patent lays out these four huge goals. We're talking about a complete overhaul. The inventor is aiming to solve a whole bunch of fundamental aviation problems all at once, just by making this one big change. So how does this thing actually work? I mean, how does it fly? Well, it's not just one big wing. It's actually a system of two main parts that work together to control the plane in a way that's totally new. Okay, first up, there's the main roof wing. It sits right on top of the fuselage, kind of like a roof rack, held up by three or more supports. And here is where it gets really clever. Each of those supports can move up and down by itself. So you lift the front two, and the whole wing tilts up for takeoff. You lift the back one, and it angles down to act as a massive air brake. It can even pivot to help the plane turn. Then you have the side wings, the ones running parallel along the body. Now, these don't have flaps or ailerons like a normal wing. Instead, the entire wing is mounted on a central pivot. By rotating that whole axis, you can tilt the wing into a lift position to go up or into a brake position to slow down. It's a much simpler, more direct approach. But wait a minute. If rotating those big side wings just controls going up or slowing down, how does the pilot actually steer the thing left and right? This is probably the most ingenious part of the whole setup, and it involves a really smart dual function system. You see, those side wings actually have two jobs that are completely separate from each other. And that's the key to understanding how this plane could maneuver. One mechanism tilts the whole wing up and down for lift, while another totally independent mechanism on that same wing handles the steering. It's a total separation of duties, which is brilliant. You rotate the wing's main axis, and that controls your vertical movement, lift or braking. But then there's a smaller, separate control surface on that same wing that handles all the horizontal movement, turning the plane left and right. Two separate actions, two separate results. The patent itself says the result is a system that feels a lot more direct and intuitive than the complicated dance between rudders and ailerons on a normal plane. It's almost like turning the steering wheel of a car. So let's just step back for a second here. If someone actually went and built a plane like this, what's the big payoff? Well, according to the inventor, the benefits go way beyond just getting better fuel economy. Yeah, the list of potential perks is pretty long and really interesting. 
Since the wings don't stick way out, the risk of clipping a wing on the ground is way lower. The huge, long wing surfaces could let you carry more cargo or people. It even claims you could have super powerful braking and get this, maybe even regenerative braking, kind of like an electric car. And yeah, the inventor thinks it just plain looks better, more harmonious. But honestly, the boldest claim of all might be this idea of immunity to dangerous crosswinds. The patent argues that because those side steering controls are tucked right up against the main body of the plane, they're sitting in the shadow of the fuselage. That means they're shielded from those powerful side gusts that can cause so much trouble for regular planes, especially during takeoff and landing. So what do we make of all this? This whole thing is just a fascinating thought experiment in what an airplane could be. It challenges some of the most basic assumptions we have about flight, and it leaves us with that big question. Is this a crazy idea that's just fun to think about, or are we looking at a glimpse of the future of aviation just waiting to leave the drawing board?